everyone and welcome to Learn Extra Session 9. In this session we are going to look at break-even points and how you can use your graph to determine um, break-even points. Firstly, just remember when you interpret any type of graph, you always must gather as much information as possible just from what they have drawn. And a break-even point is a point that is reached when your income is equal to expenses. That's generally what we understand uh, by a break-even point. But also later on, we will show you that a break-even point is reached when two graphs intersect each other. So with that, let's move on to the first example. This is example one. We are told that the pie chart shows the number of kitchen utensils a factory made per week over a six-week period and the average profit on one kitchen utensil is three rand. So firstly, let's just remind ourselves what a pie graph is. It is obviously a circular graph that has been divided into sections. What we have done is taken 360 degrees and divided it into these separate little sectors, which we can then use to represent, in this case, all the different weeks. So every different color of this pie represents a different week. The kitchen utensils are made over a six-week period, and this is in thousands. So remember, if you would like to get the accurate answer, you would have to times these amounts by 1,000. All right. The average profit on one kitchen utensil is three rand. Remember your profit. You work that out by saying your income minus your expenses. So that's what's left over. The weekly overheads. Now an overhead is sort of a fixed cost. So it's what you have to pay every week, in this case, for this factory to run. Okay, so it's costs that you cannot avoid. The weekly overheads of the factory amount to 59,400. And this excludes any direct cost of making the utensil. So we're not taking into account what it's going to cost to make the utensil. We are saying just in order for this factory to operate, they need to have an amount of 59,400 Rand. All right, let's look at what the first question asks of us. They first ask us how many utensils must the factory make each week in order to break even? Now remember that in order to break even, the expenses must equal to the income. So that's a point where you're not making any profit at all. The money that you are making is just being used to finance whatever it is that you are selling or to finance your operations. So that's just where your income is equal to your expenses. No profit is being made. All right. But in order to do this, what we have to do is um, obviously we need to, in this case, cover all costs, which is that fixed overhead of 59400 we have to take into account that that 59,400 has to be, as an expense, it has to be um, gained in your income before you can start making any profit. They tell us that there's a three rand profit on each utensil. So if I'm making a three rand profit on each utensil and they want to know how many utensils must be made every week in order to break even. If, if we're talking about breaking even, it means that the expenses of 59,400 must equal the income, which would also be 59,400. That's what it means when you break even. Your income must be equal to your expense. So if the expense is 59,000, the income is going to have to be 59,000 as well. So if I would like to find out how many utensils I need to make, all I need to do is take the 59,400 divided by three rand profit that you're making per utensil, and that will give us an answer of 19,800. So if you plug that into your calculator, you will see that you get 19,800 utensils that have to be made. So in other words, when they manufacture 19,800 utensils, they are only able to make an amount of 59,400, which covers the overheads. Okay, let's move on to part B. In which week 
did the factory not break even? Now remember, if they are making less than 19,800 utensils, then they are not breaking even because in order to break even, they've got to make exactly that amount. So anything less than that means that they are not covering costs. All right, so all we do is we go to our pie chart and we just do a little bit of an investigation, look and see where is it that these values are less than um, 19,800. So in this week, in week one, we see it's 23,4, which we times by 1,000, which will be about 23,000. And they've got values for all of the weeks. And we see that in week five, it's 19,3 times 1,000, so it's about 19,300. So in week five, they are not able to get to their break-even point of 19,800. So it is in week five that they do not break even. Part C, they want us to calculate the total profit for the six-week period. So what we've got to do is go to our pie graph, and then look at all the profit that we're making each week. And then we are going to, well, look at all the money that's coming in or the amount of utensils that are coming in each week. So that's the amount of utensils they are manufacturing each week. We know that we make a three rand profit on each utensil. So if I take the number of utensils times it by the profit, which is three rand, that will tell me how much of profit I'm making per week. So let's set that up. To calculate the total profit, I'm going to take the 23,400 times that by 3. And I'm going to do the same thing for every week to find the total profit. So it's 23,400. An easier way to do this is to add all the utensils you make for each of the six weeks. So in the first week, 23,400 utensils, 21,300 then 24,100, 31,900, and in week five there was 19,300 utensils manufactured, plus 28,500. The easiest way is to take all of those numbers, add them up together, and then times the whole thing by three, because we're making a three rand profit on each of these utensils. And this will tell us what the total profit is. So if we work it out, add up all of these numbers, and then times it by three, let's see what we get. So we've got in brackets, two, three, four hundred plus 21,300 plus 24,100 plus 31,900 plus 19,300 plus 28,500. That gives us an answer of 148,500 utensils. We then times that by three rand. And that gives us an answer of 445,500 rand. So they make a profit over the six week period of 445,500 rand. Part D would like us to calculate the average weekly profit for the six week period. So we know that in total they're making 445,000. Now we want to know per week how much are they making. So all we have to do is divide the 445,500 by the number of weeks. So it's 445500 zero, zero, divided by 6, and that gives us an answer of 74,250. And that's their average weekly profit based on a total profit of 445,500 Rand. Part E says in one of the weeks, the factory overloaded the production line resulting in the failure of some of the equipment in the following week. In which week do you think this happened? So in order to do that, we've obviously got to look at our pie charts again. So when would it be that the factory was overloaded? And if we look, what we see is 
the number that really stands out here is 31,9, which is about 31,900 utensils. That's much larger than what um, they were making previously. So it's obviously in that week that they overloaded the machine. And if we go to the purple, this is called our legend, which tells us what each of these colors represent. If we go to the purple on our legend, we see that it happens in week four. So in week four, they overused and they exhausted their production line and therefore some of the equipment stopped working. And you can see that it follows through. It makes sense because in week five, they only make 19,300 utensils. So therefore a distinct drop from week four to week five. And therefore we can say that it is in fact in week four when there was an overload of this um, production line. And then lastly, for question one, is it possible to use the given information to calculate the total income of the factory for the six week period and explain? Now, remember, in order to work out your income, you need to know what the selling price of each of these utensils is. But we don't know what the selling price is. We don't know what the cost price is. All we have is the profit. So therefore, we do not have enough information to work out the income of the factory, even for one day, let alone for a six week period. So since we do not have, so the answer here is no, it's not possible since in order to work out the total income, we need to have the average cost price or we need to have the average selling price. And since we don't have these, these are not given, it is impossible to work out what the income will be for this factory. The next thing that we're going to look at is also still finding break even points. But in this case, we are going to use simultaneous equations to help us to find break even points. Now, when we look at simultaneous equations, a break even point is found by the point of intersection of two graphs, so really where the two graphs have the same value. There are two types of simultaneous equations, or two, two ways in which we are going to look at solving simultaneously. The one way is by using um, substitution, and then the other way is graphically. So let's look at example two. In the first part of this example, we are asked to solve the equation simultaneously. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this equation simultaneously using the algebraic method. And this is generally the method that you would use unless the question specifically says use the graphical method. All right, so we are given two equations of two straight lines. We've got y is equal to 2x plus 4. And then we've got 2y plus x is equal to 3. First step is to label your equations. By that I mean we can call y is equal to 2x plus 4. We can call that equation 1. And then we can call 2y plus x equal to 3. We can call that equation 2. Now the whole point of this is to find a point at which these two graphs have the same value. Algebraically how we do it is we make one of the variables the subject of the formula. In this case, we've already got y as the subject of the formula, y is equal to 2x plus 4. So therefore, there was no need to manipulate that any further. Once we've got that, we say substitute equation 1 into equation 2. So all I'm going to do is in place of y, I'm going to substitute the value 2x plus 4. So my, my new equation, equation 2, is going to look as follows. 2 and in place of y, I'm going to put in 2x plus 4. And then it's plus x is equal to 3. So this is the new um, version of equation 2 where I've now substituted the value for y in. We can then times in and solve for one of the variables. So first we made y the subject, that means we're going to solve for x. So times the 2 into the brackets, we get 4x plus 8, plus the x on the outside is equal to 3. Add in your like terms, you get 5x plus 8 is equal to 3. Therefore taking the 8 over to the right hand side, 
you get 5x is equal to minus 5. So therefore x, by dividing both sides by 5, x will take on the value of minus 1. Now what this means is that one of the value, or the value at which these two graphs attain, this, so this x value at which these two graphs attain the same y value is x is equal to minus 1. And as a coordinate, what that means is we still need to work out the y value. So you're not done yet. You've got the x value, but it's always at a point that the graphs meet. So we need to still find the y value. So all I do, I know that y is equal to 2x plus 4. That's equation 1. I'm going to substitute the value of x. So substitute x is equal to minus 1 into equation 1. And that will help me to find the value of y. So in place of x, I put in minus 1. This gives me an answer. Minus 2 plus 4 is 2, an answer of 2. So therefore, the point minus 1 and 2 is the point of intersection of these two graphs. Right, and as I said later, we will use this, finding the point of intersection, to help us to find break-even points. Now, in the next part of this example, we're going to do exactly the same thing. Solve these two equations simultaneously, but now we are going to use the alternate method, which is the graphical method. So they say, solve the following simultaneous equations graphically. And if you notice, it's exactly the two equations we were faced with um, on the last slide. You will only solve equations graphically if they say so. If they don't say solve graphically, then please use the shorter algebraic method. All right. This will also help you to understand, in terms of graphs, what's going on, what the point of intersection look like, looks like. So what we're going to do in order to sketch these graphs, we're going to use the dual intercept method, which was discussed uh, in a previous session. So we use the dual intercept method. And I'm going to find the x and y intercepts for each of these straight lines. So for the first graph, y is equal to 2x plus 4. To find the x-intercept, I let y equal to naught. So I'm going to get 2x plus 4 is equal to naught. Therefore, 2x is equal to minus 4 which would mean, dividing both sides by 2, x is equal to minus 2. So that's my x-intercept, the coordinate minus 2 and 0. Then to find the y-intercept, we have to let x equal 0. So in the equation y is equal to 2, I make the x value 0 to x, so x now has a 0 plus 4. And you can see that your answer is 4. So therefore, as a coordinate, this will have points 0 for x and 4 for y. So I've got my x and y intercept for this straight line. We could straight away plot this onto a graph. Before we look at the next one, let's plot the one that we've got so far onto an axis. All right, usually your axes will be given to you and you would need to draw this out. So this is our x-axis and this is the y-axis. And we've just got to put the points down. So we've just worked out the x and y intercepts. So we need to first label our axes and then connect the dots that we get. All right. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 on the x-axis, and then minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and minus 4, and then 1, 2, 3, 4 on the positive side of the y-axis. So the first thing we've got to plot is a y-intercept of 4. So on my y-axis, I find the point 4, make a dot. And then on the x-axis, the x-intercept was minus 2, so I make a dot at minus 2. And then we simply have to join those two points together to get um, our straight line. All right, and that's the line 
of y is equal to 2x plus 4. All right, and we can see that the slope is positive, which means it is going in the right direction. So we've plotted that one already. Let's look at the second one, 2y plus x. There to find the x-intercept, we let y equal naught. So if y is naught here, we'll just get x has a value of 3. And then to find the y-intercept, let x equal to naught, so exactly as before. And you'd get 2y is equal to 3, since the value of x we replaced with naught. Therefore, y is equal to 3 over 2. So we can say that our x-intercept has coordinates 3 and naught for y. And then we've got to also plot the point naught for x and y is 3 over 2. So we go to the y-axis and we plot 3 over 2, which is 1 and a half in decimal terms on the y-axis. And we have to plot the point 3 on the x-axis and then join those two dots in order to form our straight line. So we just connect those two dots there we go. And what you can see, what we've just um, done is drawn the two graphs. We now have to go and read off from this graph what the point of intersection is. Because remember, we weren't asked to sketch these graphs. We were asked to find the point of intersection of these two graphs. So because I've drawn the two graphs, all I, want to, all I have to do now in order to read off the point of intersection is I drop a line down from where these two graphs meet down until the x-axis and then across onto the y-axis and then I basically just read it off and you can see that it's meeting, these two graphs are meeting at the point x is minus 2, I'm sorry, x is minus 1 and y is 2. So that is the point of intersection and you will notice that it's exactly the same as the one that we found in the first part where we had done this graphically. And it makes sense, they obviously should be the same because they're exactly the same graph. So instead of going through this whole mission of drawing the graphs and then graphically solving simultaneously, you would often be given these two graphs and then you would be told to find the point of intersection, which if you cannot read off from the graph, you will be able to find by solving simultaneously and doing it algebraically. And this will help you to find your break even points. Guys, let's look at another example of break-even points. This is example four. James has a small flat and needs to decide which option to choose for his elect electricity. He must choose between the flat rate plan and the prepaid system. The graphs will show a comparison of the costs involved for each. So let's look at the graphs. We've got the prepaid system and the flat rate system, both of them intersecting at the point A. The kilowatts in the hundreds, in hundreds are measured on the x-axis and then the charge in hundreds is measured on the y-axis. They say the relevant tariff table is as follows. We've got the system, two different systems, either the flat rate or the prepaid system. Your service charge, that's the fixed amount that you have to pay. On the flat rate system, the service charge is 150 Rand. On the prepaid system, there is no service charge. Then the charge per kilowatt hour, which is what the electricity will be measured in, is 16 cents per kilowatt hour on the flat rate system and 46 cents per kilowatt hour on the prepaid system. Okay, the first part would like us to write down a formula to determine James, James's electricity costs for each system. They say use K for the number of kilowatts. Now, with the flat rate system, which I'm just going to call FR, we see that the cost, in order to work it out, we have a fixed amount, a fixed service charge of 150. And then they have to pay 16 cents for every kilowatt hour that's used above that set service fee of 150 rand. So we've got to pay more money on top of that 150. So to work out the total cost, I've got to add 150 
to the 16 cents times k, where k represents the number of kilowatt hours, and that will tell me what the total cost is for the flat rate system. For the prepaid system, there is no fixed cost. So here the cost is just dependent on the amount of cents per kilowatt hour. So if I would like to work out the cost for the prepaid system, all I have to do is times 46 cents by the number of kilowatt hours. So in the case of the prepaid system, we just get 0.46 times K. Part B says the two lines intersect at A, explain the, significant of the uh, significance of this point. So if we go across to the graphs, we see that they both, they intersect each other at this point. And it is at this point that both systems will have equivalent costs. So in other words, at this point, he's going to pay exactly the same amount whether he's working, whether he decides to take the prepaid system or whether he takes the flat rate system. So because he's going to pay exactly the same amount at both, uh, for both systems, that is the point of intersection of both of those costs. So that is really the points at which both options will have equivalent costs. So both options have an equivalent cost at the point A. Okay, beyond that point, if you look at what happens, beyond that point A, you can see that your prepaid system suddenly starts becoming much, much more expensive than the flat rate system. So beyond that point, it would make sense to use a flat rate electricity system. And below that point, it makes sense to use a prepaid system. All right, let's go on to the C parts. They say, show how you can use your formulae from A, that's the formulae for the cost, to find the coordinates of point A. Now point A is the point of intersection of those two points, so all we've got to do is we take our flat rate equation, the cost was 150 plus 0.16k times k, which is kilowatt hours, and then the cost for the prepaid was just 0.46k. So since the point A is the point of intersection, all we've got to do is to solve these two simultaneously. So remember we've done this before, to solve simultaneously you call the one equation one, the other equation 2. In this case, we're going to substitute. It doesn't really matter which way you go around because they both have C as the subject of the formula, so you can substitute 1 into 2 or 2 into 1. Either way, you're going to get 0.46k is equal to 150 plus 0.16k. In order to solve for k, take everything within k, with a k over to the left-hand side. 0.46 minus 0.16 is 0.30k, that's equal to 150. In order to find k, we need to divide both sides by 0.3. So therefore we get k, 150 divided by 0.3 will give us an answer of 500. So therefore what that tells us is the number of kilowatts at that point A is 500 kilowatts. But if I would like to know what the cost is, because remember they have the equivalent cost, what I would need to do is take that K and substitute it back into one of the equations. I'm going to put it into the easier one, which is 0.46 times 500. You do that and you'll see that you will get a value of 230. So you can quickly do that on your calculator. You'll see that the point A will then have coordinates of 500 and 230. So if we go across to the graph, let's see if that makes sense. If I drop a line from point A, I see that yes, it is going to cut at 500 kilowatts on the x-axis, and then if we go across onto the y-axis, that is 230. So roughly on this graph you can see that your answer is correct. You've got um, these two graphs intersecting at a cost of 230 Rand. And then the last part says advise James which option he should choose 
and why with reference to the question that we've just answered. Now remember, James has a small flat. So if he's got a very small flat, I would say that he's probably going to use less than that 500 kilowatts that we've just found. So if he's using a small flat, what we can show you on the graph is that when he has used less than 500 kilowatts of electricity, the prepaid system, which is this, this one that um, I'm going to now just highlight here, the prepaid system is much, much cheaper than your flat rate system. Remember, your flat rate system has a fixed fee of 150 Rand, which is why it's starting so high up on the y-axis. So since you can see below that point A, below 500 kilowatts, the prepaid system is in fact cheaper than the flat rate system. It makes sense that since James has a small flat, he should use the prepaid system. However, if he started using more and more electricity uh, than, than those 500 kilowatts, then from the graph you can see that it makes sense for him to now move on to the, the uh, flat rate system because the flat rate system is much, much cheaper beyond the point A than the prepaid system. So it really depends on how much electricity he's going to use. But since he's using, has a small flat, we will assume that he's not using that much electricity. So to answer this question, it would be best for him to use the prepaid system. Guys, we're now going to look at another example involving break-even points. This is example five. A tailor makes shirts that cost him 20 Rand each to make, so that is the cost price. He sells them for 50 Rand each, that's the selling price, and his overheads are 300 Rand, overheads being all the fixed costs. If he makes and sells X shirts per day, how many shirts must he make to break even? And what they've done now is they've given you two equations. They've given you the equation for income, and the equation for expenses. So remember your break-even point is the point at which income is equal to expenses. So we just have to solve these two equations simultaneously to find out how many shirts will take him to his break-even point. So all we do is equate the income equation to the expenses equation. So 50x is equal to 20x plus 300. Bring the 20 over to the left-hand side. So we get 50x minus 20x is equal to 300. So 30x equals 300. Therefore, x, divide both sides by 30, would give us an answer of 10. So therefore, he has to make 10 shirts in order to break even. And it makes sense because if we take this value of 10, put it back into our equation for income and into our equation for expenses, you will see that both his income and his expenses are equal to 500 Rand at the break even point. We're now going to move on to example six, which is the last example on break even points. So using graphs, to find out what is the point that a business will break even. Jack runs a business selling soccer flags. The graphs below show the relationship between the number of flags that he buys and sells and his monthly expenditure, which is the same as expenses, and income, that's the money that he gets in. Jack pays 150 Rand rental a month, so that's a cost, that's an expense. And he buys flags for 10 Rand each and sells them for 25 Rand. So selling price 25, cost price 10 Rand. So let's have a look at the graph that they've given us. The graph in white is the graph which depicts, depicts his expenses. We can see that it starts at a value of 150 on the y-axis that value being the fixed rental cost of 150 Rand. And then his income starting at the value naught because obviously if he doesn't sell anything, he makes no money. So starting at the point naught and continuing, we see that both graphs do intersect each other at one, at one of the points on the X and Y axis. 
The first question we'd like us to answer, um, or the first question we need to answer, is why does the expenses graph start at 150 Rand? And I've already said that. That's because he has a fixed rental cost, regardless of whether he makes any money or not. And therefore, his first expense is that 150 Rand before he can make any money. Then we have to write down an equation to describe Jack's monthly expenses. All right, so if we go up here, we see that he pays 150 Rand rental and each of the flags that he buys costs him 10 Rand. So therefore, the equation for to describe Jack's expenses will be, if we call it E, it's going to be 150 plus 10 times X. So depending on how many flags he buys, his, his expenses will go up. Um, every every time. So let's look at question 6.3. In this question we are asked what is his income from selling 14 flags? So to determine John's income from selling 14 flags all we've got to do is go to the number of flags on the x-axis, go to the point 14 and then from that point upwards until we reach the graph that tells us what our income is, which in this case is the black graph, and then we'll read across onto the y-axis to see how much um, money he's getting. So from 14, we extend a line until it hits the graph that describes income, which is the graph in black, and then we're going to read across. And we see that when he sells 14 flags, his income is 350 Rand. So his income from 14 flags is 350 Rand. 6.4, what are his expenses from selling 14 flags? So very similar to the one we've just done, except for now, instead of going across to the income um, graph, we are going to go to the expenses graph. And we are going to read from the expenses graph what his expenses are when he sells 14 flags. So if we go across on the same line from 14 until it reaches expenses, which is the white graph, and we then read across on the y-axis. So let's just draw that in. So from that point, I'm going to go across onto the y-axis. And what you will see is that point is roughly 275. So that is roughly, if we just round it up a little bit, very close to 300, that point will be 275 Rand. So that's his expenses from selling 14 flags. 350 Rand is his income. The next part would like to know what his profit is. Remember, profit is equal to income minus expenses. So all we've got to do to find the profits is take away from the 350 Rand take away 275 and 350 minus 275 is 75 Rand. Finally, they like to know what is his break-even point. Remember the break-even point, point at which expenses are equal to income. In order to find that point, we are not going to solve this algebraically. We are going to simply go to our graph that we have drawn and read it off the graph. All right, so we see that the graphs intersect each other at that point there. So all I'm going to do is drop a line onto the x-axis and then read across on the y-axis. It's also already should be quite clear for you. You can read it quite nicely off, but if we do that, just put a line in to show you, we can see clearly that the break-even point when your income graph intersects your expenses graph is at the point 10 on the x-axis and 250 on the y-axis. So guys, what this really means in terms of money is that he has got to sell 10 flags in order for his income to be equal to his expenses and they will both have a value of 250 Rand when he sells 10 flags. Okay, everyone, now that's it for uh, interpreting graphs and break-even points. Now it's your turn to practice some of the questions in the exercise section. Let's move on to the exercise. 
This question comes from the March 2009 supplementary exam and in total it is worth 26 marks. It comes from the Department of Education exam. Exercise 1. The Hospitality Studies Department of Sesfekile High School bakes brown bread in order to raise funds for the shortfall incurred in their day-to-day -day expenses. The school charges the Hospitality Studies Department a fixed weekly cost of 400 Rand for water and electricity. The cost of producing one loaf of brown bread, including labour and ingredients, is 3 Rand 50. The brown bread is sold at 6 Rand a loaf. The table below shows the weekly cost of making bread. The table shows weekly income received from selling bread. The formula used to calculate the total cost per week is total cost per week is equal to the fixed weekly cost plus the number of loaves of bread times the cost per loaf. Use the formula to find the values of A and B in the table. Part B. The table below shows the weekly income from selling the bread. Determine the values of C and D. Part C. Use the values from table 1 and 2 to draw two straight line graphs on the same grid showing the total cost per week of making bread 
and the income per week from selling bread. Clearly label the graphs costs and income. Continuing with the exercise, use the tables or the graphs drawn to answer the following questions. Question 1. How many loaves must they sell to break even? Question 2. What income would they receive if 230 loaves were sold? Estimate the number of loaves baked if the total cost is 840 rand. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now that you understand how to use graphs to help you to find break-even points, let's try some of the exercise questions. This is exercise 1 and this exercise comes from the March 2009 supplementary exam. The Hospitality Studies Department of Sesfikile High School bakes brown bread in order to raise funds for the shortfall incurred in their day-to-day -day expenses. The school charges the Hospitality Studies Department a fixed weekly cost of 400 Rand for water and electricity. The cost of producing one loaf of brown bread, including labor and ingredients, is 3 Rand 50. The brown bread is sold at 6 Rand a loaf. The table below shows the weekly cost of making bread. The formula used to calculate the total cost per week is total cost per week is equal to fixed weekly cost plus the number of loaves of bread times the cost per loaf. Use the formula to find the values of A and B. Part B of the exercise. The table below shows the weekly income from selling the bread. Determine the values of C and D. Part C. Use the values from Table 1 and Table 2 to draw two straight line graphs on the same grid showing the total cost per week of making bread and the income per week from selling bread. Clearly label the graphs, costs and income. Use the tables or the graphs drawn to answer the following questions. Question 1. How many loaves must they sell to break even? Question 2. What income would they receive if 230 loaves were sold? And question 3. Estimate the number of loaves baked if the total cost is 840 rand. And then finally, question 4, determine by calculation whether the high school will make a profit or loss if they bake 300 loaves during the week, but only sell 200. Okay guys, so now you've had some time to look at the exercise, let's go through it. So all I'm going to do is just highlight some of the key points um, that, are given, that is given to you in this exercise. We are told that a hospitality department of a high school bakes brown bread in order to raise funds and um, for, uh, for the shortfall that's incurred in their day-to-day -day expenses. Shortfall is something that they have to fill the gap of. So in other words, they don't make enough money to fulfill all their expenses. So there's some sort of shortfall that they need to bake bread in order to get that money in. The school charges the hospitality department a fixed weekly cost of 400 rand. And the cost of producing one loaf of bread, you are told, including labor, is 350 rand, so that's your cost price. The brown bread is sold at 6 rand a loaf, that would be your selling price. They then give you a table showing the weekly cost, and they ask you to find the values of A and B, and they give you a formula to determine the total cost per week. Now, we are told that the total cost is equal to the fixed weekly cost. So we first need to go back to the information that they give us and we see there that um, the studies department has a fixed weekly cost of 400 Rand. So that would be the value to put into your formula. So we're going to put in 400 
plus the number of loaves of bread times the cost per loaf. Now, when we're trying to find the value of A, you see that in your table we are working out the total cost, and at that point, the number of loaves we are interested in is 120. So, it's going to be plus the number of loaves of bread, which is 120, times the cost per loaf, and that we are told is 3 Rand 50. So all we're going to do is put in the 3 Rand 50. And then work all of this out on your calculator and make sure you get the following answer. 400 plus 120 times 3 Rand 50 will give you an answer of 820 Rand. So therefore the total cost is 820 Rand and therefore that is the value of A. Now when we look at the value of B, we see that in the table that stands for the number of loaves. So we want to find B which is the number of loaves, so that means we must be given the total cost, which we are given. The total cost is 1240. So in this formula, we know that the total cost has a value of 1000 240. We know that the fixed cost is 400, so we can put that in. Plus, we know that the cost per loaf is 3 rand 50, so we can put that in. And we are trying to work out the number of loaves, so that's the value that we are looking for. We are looking for B. All right, we take the 400 over to the left hand side, we get 840. 1240 minus 400 is 840, that's equal to 3 rand 50 times B. So to find the value of B, divide both sides by 3 rand 50 and you will get an answer of 240 rand. Okay, for part B of the exercise, they give us another table. This time it shows us the weekly income from selling bread and we are asked to find the values of C and D. Now C is your total income and D is the number of loaves, so two different quantities that we are trying to find here. The first thing we have to determine is how we would work out the income from selling bread. Now they tell you that they make or well, they sell the bread at 6 rand per loaf. So therefore if I would like to work out their income it's going to be equal to the number of loaves that they sell. So it's the number of loaves times the cost or the selling price per loaf, which is 6 rand, so times by 6. That is how I would determine the income they're going to get depending on the number of loaves that they sell. So once we've got that formula down, now we can try to find the value of C. C is the total income. We are given that the number of loaves that they are selling is 120. So to work out the total income, I'm going to take the number of loaves. This is the income. You take your number of loaves, which is 120, and then times that by the selling price per loaf, which is 6, and 120 times 6 will give you an answer of 720 rand. Now, for the value of D, here we're working a little bit backwards because we need to work out the number of loaves. We are given that the total income is 960 Rand, so if I need to find out the value of D, I can substitute my total income, which is 960, and that's going to be equal to the number of loaves, which is what we are trying to work out. That's the value of D, times the selling price, which is 6. In order to work out D, all I have to do, divide both sides by 6, so you get therefore D, 960 divided by 6 will give you 160 loaves. So we've just worked out that the value of C is 720 Rand and the value of D is 160 Rand. Now let's move on to part C. They say use the values from table 1 and table 2, so the income and the cost table, to draw two straight line graphs on the same grid 
which they will give to you in an exam. They will provide you a set of axes on nice graph paper, so you will be able to plot your points easily. Show the total cost per week and um, show the income per week and clearly label your graphs. That's important because if you label properly, you will get marks for that. So make sure that um, you label your graphs properly. So let's start as always. Now this is just a rough sketch of the type of graph that you will, uh, the type of axis, sorry, that you will be given. You will be given one on graph paper, which would be much more accurate than what I've got here. First step to get your marks, to make sure you get all the marks, is to label your axes. We are going to call the x-axis the number of loaves, since that is our independent variable. So we'll call that the number of loaves. And then the y-axis, that will be our amount in rands, if you would like to put that in. So that's our amount. And then we can call the graph. What are we showing? We're showing basically income and costs. So we'll call this the income and costs graph. All right, we've gone over quite a lot of plotting of graphs previously. So what we're going to do is just go to those tables, take the values from these tables, and then put those values into our graph. So by now, hopefully, with the, you've listened to all the other sessions, and so you know exactly how to plot points from the first session we did on graphs. So basically just going into this table, taking values from this table, plotting them onto our axis, and then we have our graph. Now you will notice, first let's draw the total cost uh, received from selling bread. You will notice that that starts at 400 rands, and obviously the reason for that is because we have a fixed cost of 400 rand. So on my axis, I need to plot start with north on the x-axis and 400 on the y-axis. That's the starting point. You will plot all these points, and when you get a reasonable amount of points um, on your axis, then you can join those dots. I'm just going to put one or two in and show you the basic idea of what this graph is going to look at, look like. So this is going to be our income graph. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a key point which I saw there uh, on, the, on the graph. So you can take any one that you like. What I've decided to do is just to go with one or two of the points. So I'm going to plot naught and 400 and maybe the 120 and the value we worked out for A. But you can literally take out take any of these values, plot it on your axis, and then join your dots up. All right, so I'm going to take Norton 400 and 160 and 960. So I go to my graph. You know how to plot by now. I'm going to put a dot at Norton 400, and then another one at 160, which is roughly just over halfway there, and 960. Okay, but as I say, you will be given a proper grid in your exam, so you will be able to plot this more accurately. And then all we're going to do is join our dots up. That we will call the cost graph. All right. Let's then, uh, so that's our cost graph. Let's move on to the income graph. So in that table, we see that we have uh, the graph starting at the point 0, 0. And uh, you can choose any point that you want to. I'm going to use the same one that I've used just in a little in the last part, where D is 160 and, um, and your, your total income was 960. All right, and so remember, it's starting at 0, 0. It's going to pass through this exactly the same points. And I'm going to join that up just in a different color. Okay, once we've got those points down, you can then take out your markings if you like. And now that we've drawn our graphs, remember you have to label all of your graphs. Now that we've drawn these graphs, we will obviously be asked questions on this graph, so make sure that it's as accurate as possible. Make sure you've labeled all of your axes, you labeled all of your graphs, and you've used a proper scale. All right, and you will get full marks for that question. Okay, so let's see what questions they're going to ask us on, this, uh, on these graphs and tables that we've just used. The first part would like to know, by using the tables or the graphs, 
how many loaves must they sell to break even? Remember, break even, we've been through it over and over again. The break even point is when your income will be equal to your expenses. All right, so in terms of the graphs, you can do it algebraically where you use your two equations that we set up previously and then work it out. But because we've drawn graphs and they should be quite accurate, we can literally just go to those graphs we have drawn and read it off. Because remember, your break-even point is the point at which your graphs are going to intersect each other. So we see that that happens at this point. Okay, that's roughly midway between 100 and 200, just over midway. And then there on the y-axis. So if you, you would be able to read this off properly from your graph, but it is roughly 160 on the x-axis and 960 on the y-axis. That's the point, which you could also see from your tables. You could clearly see that they had that point in common. They intersected at 160 and 960. So how many loaves must they sell to break even? They must sell 160 loaves. And that's just by reading straight from the graph. Guys, so we've just determined the break-even point on this graph, which was the point at which the income was equal to the cost. Now let's look at question two and see what they would like us to do. Here they want to know what income would they receive if 230 loaves were sold. So all we have to do to read off from the graph is we go to the, the loaves uh, side of the axis, which is the x-axis, and we're going to read off from the x-axis and we'll see where um, the 230 loaves line hits the income line. So what I'm saying, we go to our axis, we're looking at the number of loaves, which is the horizontal axis, and we're literally going to draw a line and read across as we did with question one. We want to know the, in the income that they're going to receive, so we need to go 230 somewhere there. The income being the white graph. And all we're going to do is just read off from this graph where um, the 230 line would hit the y-axis. So we're going to go across from here. And that would be roughly midway between 1,200 and 1,600. You will be able to read this off accurately from the graph you have drawn. So it's approximately um, 1,380 rand, somewhere midway between 1,200 and 1,600. Part three would like us to estimate the number of loaves baked if the total cost is 840 rand once again we're going to go to the graph and read it off from the graph they tell us what the total cost is and we know that the amounts are put on the y-axis so we're going to go to an amount of 840 and see what the cost will be so all we're going to do is draw a line until it hits the in the cost um, straight line and we're going to simply go down from that point and then read it off. So that's roughly 840 and that's just over 100, so let's say 125 loaves. All right, so at a cost of 840 rand, they would be baking 125 loaves and that we estimated straight from the graph. Guys, we've now come to the end of Learn Extra Session 9. In this section, we looked at uh, break-even points and how you can use your graphs to help you to find break-even points. Remember to practice these questions and work hard at uh, answering these types of questions because they can be worth a lot of marks in your final exam.